So I told you all that um, I, I owe an apology to a particular player at Oklahoma. And uh, yeah, I've decided that I'm going to make this video. i got a special guest who's going to talk through why I'm apologizing as well as why they knew that uh, I was wrong from jump. All that coming up here in about 10 seconds. Welcome to Unfair Sports. I am your host, Jay. Thank you all for tuning here on the channel. Please, while you're here, hit that like and subscribe button and show some love that tells YouTube that I'm doing something right. And by subscribing, you get way more of this content. I've got a special guest with me today on this video, my main man, Ty Hayes with Around the Table Sports. Ty, let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, thank you for having me on, Jay. Always a ton of fun getting to talk to you. Y'all can find me at Around the Table Sports on YouTube constant college football content, whether that's game analysis, kind of talking about film or recruiting. I'm talking about college football all the time. Love to have you all over there. It's always a good time. And you can see Jay quite frequently over there as well. So it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, we have a blast over there. and We definitely talk a bunch of college football. So we've got some topics to jump into and we'll dive all in. All right, so I have to go ahead and put out a public apology. And me and Ty has talked about this a few times. And let me first preface it this way. <laughs> In my defense, a disclaimer, I never said that this individual was not a good player. I just did not feel like they were top dog in what was going on at Oklahoma. And so far, he's starting to prove me wrong. So I want to go ahead and do this first. Ty was big on Eric Gray. I was not high on Eric Gray. Even though I love it to Eric Gray. He played at Tennessee, which I'm it's my other team. But I want to apologize. Eric, you are killing it. You are starting off strong, especially in a team that is playing a very much vanilla offensive setup. You are making the most of what's going on. So, Eric Gray, I am sorry for doubting you. It looks like you will pace out in this and you'll finish with over a thousand yards rushing this season. So Ty, what was it about Eric Gray that made you say y'all are all wrong? Y'all need to believe in this man. So for me, it was a few things. First and foremost, I, I, I have faith in DeMarco, right? And whenever you listen to DeMarco Murray talk, especially it was a year ago, um, whenever he would be talking about the running back room, when Eric Gray first got there, during that spring, he kept talking and bringing up the word versatility. And I remember it was about three or four weeks in a row. And that was the theme. Every time DeMarco would talk to the media, it was something revolving around versatility. And then on about the fifth week, he came out and said, Eric Gray is our most versatile back. And whenever he said that, I was like, okay, well, this is exactly what DeMarco is looking for. This is the theme he's been bringing up, and he's found that in Eric Gray. Now, the reason I was so big on Eric Gray is because of that versatility. Look, he's a guy that, quite frankly, is as big of a threat in the passing game as he is in the running game. He's someone who keeps a defense on their heels, and especially when you look at a Jeff Levy offense, my question is, is he's someone who allows you to do more, not less, so I want to see more of him on the field. Now, that's not to say that I think that Marcus Major isn't a fantastic running back. I mean, clearly, every time he goes in the game, the results speak for themselves. That is a really talented running back, and this is not to take anything away from Marcus Major by any stretch of the imagination. I actually am also in the camp with those thinking that Marcus Major needs more touches. Hey, I I'm, I'm with you, I hear you, and I agree with you, but... This is something I told you, Jay, that I almost kind of resonated with Eric Gray about, right? Whenever Lincoln left, I felt like a lot of players got the benefit of the doubt for the performances that were had last season, and deservedly so for circumstances we all know and we don't have to go over again. I always felt like there was one player, though, that didn't get that equal benefit of the doubt like everybody else, and that was Eric Gray. And I constantly heard arguments about like, oh, well, the offense didn't utilize this individual well, but I never felt like Eric Gray got that same benefit of the doubt that other players did. And now fast forward and we see what Jeff Levy's doing with him. He's averaging 7.7 .7 yards per carry right now. And that's not even speaking of the threat he is in the passing game. I just think when you look at the totality of circumstances, man, with what Jeff Levy wants to do, 
Eric Gray is a guy that when the defense sees him in the game, they can't say, okay, we need to load the box because he could go out on a wheel route and line up on a linebacker and hit it right over your head for a 60 yard touchdown. Like he's got that ability. He keeps a defense on their heels, which is what I love about Eric Gray. No, I 100% agree with you there. And I think that was where I was wrong in my, and I guess my assessment of him was you're right. A lot of players got the benefit of the doubt. And the, the ones that really got the benefit of the doubt was the defense because of the way the defense was set up. But on the offensive side, the expectations was for them to be explosive irregardless because that is supposed to be Lincoln Riley's specialty. And with Eric Gray, it just did not feel like we were going to get that out of him, even though Kennedy Brooks was the main guy. Like, it was literally Kennedy Brooks' offense. So you can't expect Eric to be to really get much touches, even though he rushed for, what, 700 yards on 157 carries last year. Uh, I'm sorry, that was in 2020. But 2021, his production did go down to only 400 yards. And he didn't feel like he was actually being leveraged. Coming into this system this year, oh, he's playing at 286 yards so far, two touchdowns, averaging 7.7 .7 yards a carry with two 100-yard gains. It's like he's making something out of almost nothing, especially those first two games, because the stability on the offensive line was our big issue. And every sports fan that actually watches football all pointed that out. Why does the line not look like it's very good? Why does the line look like it's making a lot of mistakes? Why does the line look like it's not really blocking? So him going out there and being able to make some magic happen in that first game against UTEP and then going blowing up for over 113 yards against Nebraska told me that I was wrong and I needed to apologize. So this is the official apology from Jay Smith here at Unfair Sports to you, Eric Gray. Yeah, man, you probably are a first, second, and third down back. Now, this is what's interesting, too. He's not even really catching the ball out the backfield in right now. Like, it seems like he's not really even being leveraged for that. It's but pound it's on the ground. But it's, and it's, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that because, and obviously a different team, but same theory. If anybody has the time, go back and check out Alabama against Utah State. In the opening sequences of that game, there was a play, and I've seen Oklahoma run this, and very similar things happen. But I want to point this out because it's the same logic. Jameer Gibbs floated out the backfield on just a little out route, right? Something mm. that give Bryce an option. Whenever he did that, the corner and safety both cheated Ford because they knew what a threat Jameer Gibbs is as a receiving threat. At the point where they both stepped forward, Kobe Prentice just kept running his go route and Bryce hit him 15 yards down the field right where that safety should have been who just stepped forward. Whether Eric Gray gets the ball out the backfield or not, to me, is irrelevant. The question is, does he make a defense second guess where he is? Because if mm. he can draw even one guy, and if he can make that safety look for one second in the flat, there's Eric Gray. Well, there's Marvin Mims that just flew right by you because you were worried about Eric Gray out the backfield. That is is the versatility that I think is so powerful with Eric Gray. Now, Jay, what I'm really interested in is we, you know, you being an Oklahoma fan, you'll know this, the the word Yamaha. I'm interested to see if Eric Gray and Marcus Major can get some dual back packages because that is when I think a defense is really on their heels because now everything is on the table for Oklahoma. What do we want to do? Power run? Scream game? Like everything is on the table. Defense has to account for everything. Yeah, that would be very interesting. I wonder if Levy has that in his setup. I know his offense is really run heavy, even though you wouldn't think that, especially a former Baylor slash UCF slash yeah, Ole Miss offense. Like you would not expect – it's it's very heavy run. And getting a dual back setup, huh, I wonder if that's coming down the line from uh, Jeff Levy. We'll I wouldn't be see. shocked at all. I wouldn't be shocked at all. Well, it looks like they're definitely opening the playbook more, uh, especially as we're going deeper into the season. And it feels like the upcoming game, which, you know, we'll talk about Kansas State another time. I know, Ty, you're going to have a preview on Kansas State tomorrow. Yep. That's definitely going to be something I believe 
will probably start coming more into it. That game, that's the game I think the playbook goes to page seven. I think they really open it up to get a lot of practice in, even if they can beat this team with the third page. Between Kansas State and TCU, it's time to start implementing more stuff in preparation for Texas, just in case Texas gives us um, gives us some problems. So yeah, I mean they gave Bama some problems, and Texas is a team they they play up to their opponents, man. And I, I think that's part of the frustration of the Texas fan base. I know this is an Oklahoma video, so I'm not going to <laughs> I'm not going to inundate the fans with Texas talk. But I think all Oklahoma fans just resonated with what I said. Because how many games, Jay, have y'all walked into versus Texas and you've been the better team all year long? There really isn't a conversation to be had of which team is the better team. Well, you get in that game and there's a minute left and you're still having a heart attack as to who's going to win this game because Texas traditionally plays up to their competition. You, that's why it's always such a fun game, that Red River rivalry. I mean, that is must see. Agreed. I'm I'm missing the days of the early 2000s when there were victories of 56 to 14 and 63 to 12. Right. That's what we need to start seeing again. Don't allow Texas to play up because like you said, the one thing about them, and this will be the last point, they get talent. And sometimes their talent outplays their coaching and until the coaching takes over and ends it for them. It basically just yeah. puts them out of their misery. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great example. Thank you, Ty. I appreciate you talking about Eric Gray with me. Yes, sir.